Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. Hey everyone, welcome again to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DK Sportsbook app and use the code BearBets. That's BearBets, two words for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets. Well, here we are, Jeff. Not the, uh, not the best of weeks last week, so we're going to have to try and turn it around. Yeah, I'm, I'm the bear. That's, that's Jeff, Sammy P, and Will will join us shortly always uh what what a, what a great week with playoff baseball getting started champions league underway and then of course we cap we uh cap the week off on saturday with uh with the uh college football landscape and nfl on sunday so like i said not a good week uh last week jeff but it happens bear we're here plenty of plenty of plenty of season left and um where, where do you, where do you want to start? Well, what, what's I, on your mind? I, I think after now, I think mean, it's five college weekends. To me, Bear, there's a, sort of like a clear delineation of the top teams and sort of the rest, right? Like I think after watching Bama Georgia, my takeaway is both teams are very good still. I think, and we talked about this last week, the Kalen DeBoer effect, right? Where Oregon certainly had this the last couple of years with with Washington. Like, they come out fast in games. Like, there's a barrage of points early in games as you sort of figure out what Kalen DeBoer has in store for you. And then as you figure it out, like, you adjust defensively, which Georgia certainly did. And then Ryan Williams made it, made a great play. Bear, do you know he's 17 years old? Can you believe that? He's, se- no. he's 17 years old. That was a great play, really? by the way. It was fantastic. Um, but, you know, Georgia sort of came back, right? Bama withstood that. But, like, to me, if you played that game again, probably a pick them on a neutral field. Both those teams are still very good. Um, and then it's Ohio State. It hasn't been tested yet. Now, that they'll get tested this weekend for the first time and playing sort of a real team in Iowa. And then they'll play Oregon, of course. And then, to me, Texas is right there. Like, those four teams. Is Tennessee the fifth team? Is Oregon the fifth or sixth team? Like, I feel like the top four is pretty solid. If you want to put Tennessee in there and make it a top five bear, I sort of see the champion as of right now, again, still early, lots of ball left, pretty solidly coming out of those five teams. Now, obviously, one won't won't get a bye, so one will have to be the five seed, but it does feel like right now that's a pretty solid group. And then after that, I think there's a lot of good teams, still a lot to show for those teams. They can maybe make it feisty for a playoff game or two, but not quite championship material at the moment. It's interesting because I think uh, in regards to Georgia, now, I wouldn't necessarily bet them to win the SEC, but I still would bet. I, I think you're getting a great price on them now to win the national yeah. championship. Now there's obviously a chance that they will not get uh, the first round by uh, if they don't make the SEC championship game, and don't win it. But I know they lost, but I, I think if you're Kirby smart or if you're a Georgia fan, I think you need to take a step back and be like, look, in order for us to lose, it took us playing our worst half of football that we could imagine in how long. It took Carson Beck turning the ball over and just making poor decisions and wide receivers not helping him out a lot. It took Alabama with a Heisman-type performance from Jalen Milrow to get up 28 on the road in a hot top five hostile environment for us only to come back and take the lead with three mm-hmm. minutes to go. And then you have the ridiculous play by Milrow and Williams. And then, Oh, by the way, we're going to get the ball back and it's, it's going to take an interception in the end zone by you to hang on and win. Like if, if that's what it took for Georgia to lose a game, I know they lost, but I wouldn't feel so I wouldn't no. feel as awful 
as some Georgia fans might feel about that loss. I think your point about how to wager on them is is very is very valid because their schedule was tough, Bear, right? So they just lost to Bama. They have to go to Texas still, right? They have to go to Old Miss and they get Tennessee at home. So if they split those, you're looking at three losses. Now, a nine and three Georgia team, Bear, is probably in the playoffs with sort of the madness we're seeing around. Like the Big 12 is probably one team. The ACC is probably one team because I look you maybe two maybe it two, be two. Be, yeah like, but, like but, if Clemson were to win out yeah I mean like, sure you, you I, I think I think they I think the ACC yeah, might get two. right but but so that means that Clemson won the conference essentially right if they went out and Miami has one loss right. they're both getting okay sure sure but in nine three Georgia team if they split those 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 remaining two games it's certainly possible to happen well then they don't have to play the SEC teams as much in the postseason right they're not gonna play all those teams again they might play one or two of them and again, Georgia versus Bama, neutral field is probably a pick em right now. So that's a good way to maybe wager on this is, hey, they're not going to win the SEC, but now with a 12-team playoff, it's not as important. I was looking forward to Bear. If Georgia scored at the end of that game, that would have made it 41-40. Because of the 12-team playoff, does Kirby go for two there? Because a loss, it stinks. It's terrible. But it doesn't matter quite the way it used to matter. If you lose that game in previous years, you might be out of the playoff because you're not even an SEC championship game, quite possibly, right? But now, do you think he would have gone for two to win the game? I think he would have. Yeah. I think he would have. I think he would have gone. I think he would have done it too. That would have been fun to watch. It, it, it totally would have been would have been fun to watch. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this SEC kind of round robin ish plays out the rest of the year. You would think Alabama is in a really good position to make the SEC title game right now. But yeah. uh, I don't I don't know where, but Georgia still controls its fate to to get there, being that they do play Tennessee and, and Ole Miss and Texas as well. So uh, could be getting a rematch there in Atlanta between the Tide and the Bulldogs. Anything else? The, the Big 12 is, is the most fun conference right now, Bear, right? I mean, we'll talk about this again in the group chat with Sammy and Will, but, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I don't know who wins it. I, I have no idea. I mean, it's Cam Rising playing. Uh, UCF <laughs> UCF is, I think, downgraded severely after losing Colorado. Colorado looks good. Kansas State played bad at BYU, who's undefeated, who's 5-0. and They've already got yep. over their win total, Bear. Um, yep. You know, but is Oklahoma State, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think they're in the running. Iowa State sort of, under the radar, which I know you've liked Iowa State Bear, but like I, are, I don't sure are. But like I don't know what they're I mean, they're not flashy. Like, like what what is Iowa State? They beat Iowa, good good win so far. I don't I don't know if I'm missing a team. Arizona had, had, had they, to come they, back. They against, beat Arkansas State a hell of a lot more convincingly yeah. than than, uh, than well, Michigan did. But yeah, no, Michigan can't I, I think all we look well, that's true. I think all you can really say about the Big Twelve, like we we know that Kansas is not a contender. I mean, they're one of the biggest disappointments in the season. We know Oklahoma State is not a contender. They they are a team that appears a little lost a little bit right now uh, on offense. And I just don't I just don't care about Cam Rising anymore. I just don't. I, 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 every week it's yeah. the same thing. And every week Kyle's out there and no, we don't know. It, it just everyone knows I mean in, until we see him on the field, the I, I just don't care. And uh, I, I was I was under on on Utah this year, yeah. so uh, I feel good but about I, that. So we'll, we'll see what I, happens. Quick, quick on the Cam Rising thing, Bear, because this is where I think the lack of an injury report and the secrecy of college football programs really hurts them, right? Because, you know, in the NFL, you would know what his injury is. And I'm not saying that we should have to know what it is, Bear, but you would know exactly what it is because either the agent tells Ian Rapport, Adam Schefter, and they put it out there, or there's an injury report, right? The, the full participation, limited, out, doubtful. Pro, uh, is doubtful, questionable, and or probable? They, they limited one of those four. It was or you know full participation. Like we we know what these players' injuries are, and Utah is yeah. being super secretive when they don't have to be, right, Bear? They could just say, "Hey guys, Cam Rising has a has a messed up finger. It's going to take a month," and we would have been like, "Cool." And now, because they're so secretive, when you listen to us talk about it, I mean, Bear just said, and we we both like Utah, like, I don't care anymore. I just don't care anymore. There's apathy now because we've gone through this for a year and a half of them toying with us. Also, think about, like, the players. I don't know if Cam Rising is practicing or not. I didn't even bother to check in this week, to be honest with you. I did two weeks ago before Columbus State. Like, is he practicing a little bit? Not, and imagine if you're, like, a, a starter on that team. Cam's sort of there for half a practice and then doesn't play on Saturday. Like, it's just, to me, just be honest. Just say, hey, man, 
he, he's going to be out X amount of weeks. He'll be back. It doesn't do the opponent. It doesn't really matter. Like I, I don't really understand the secret of it because it only bear. It only hurts your program. It doesn't do any good for your program to be secret about this. You you are so right. And like this is not even as a better. This is just as a college football fan. Like I like Utah. You, I want them. I, yes, I, it, it, <laughs> it makes you resentful towards the yes. program because it's like you you roll your eyes. You're like, real seriously? And, Come on. And, and, and then when they say things like he's going to play, you don't believe him because they keep saying right. he's going to play, right? And and like and so. Look, he told his team Friday, supposedly. That was the, the rumor. But look, Utah was flat in that game, is, is not surprising. Uh, but you know what's not flat, Bear? This game on group chat. Okay. It's me. No. It's you. It's Sammy and Will. We're talking all things college hey. football, the games this weekend, and of course, Sammy's FCS special. If you listen for a while, you can guess it by now. Here's a game on group chat. <laughs> game on group chat. Once again, myself, Jeff, joined by Sammy P and Will Hill. And guys, I am just an absolute shambles uh, this week after the Oregon team total did not come in uh, 28 points first half. You had a pick six and just then they were cold in the second half. It uh, didn't happen as well as Penn State losing that bet as well. So it was not a not a good week for your boy, but hopefully this uh, conglomeration and commiseration of friends here can, uh, can get us right. Only the one ranked matchup this week. Uh, A&M, number 25, hosting Missouri. Aggies, a small favorite over Missouri. Sammy, everything in this game tells me to, to bet A&M, but I still don't know if I can trust the Aggies here, even though I think Missouri is probably the most overrated team in the country uh, coming into the rank as number nine. We know one thing about A&M, boys and girls. Defensively, they still fight, and they have guys on that D-line that are probably going to play in the NFL. So when you have an A&M game, you think about defense and a lack of offense. And that's really the question I have in this game, Will and Jeff. Can Missouri get to about 27, 28 points? And my early inclination is no. Um, the total open 49 and a half on Sunday afternoon. It's down to 48 and a half right now at DraftKings. Imagine that keeps coming down as we get closer to kickoff. And obviously there's always that buyback on low numbers. Like if this were to go through 47, people would be ecstatic to lay it back up. But I, I lean under, uh, haven't made a position yet. Not going to lay Missouri or take Missouri rather, because they're getting two and a half at, uh, at uh, A&M right now. But this is a game where I, I think it's, I think it's an under more times than not. Haven't gotten to the window yet though. Yeah, I like that under look and Missouri just look, it, it's a talented team, but they haven't been tested at uh, home for Missouri State, uh, home for Murray State, home for Buffalo, home for BC. I mean, it's just it, it's a lot of uh, you know home for Vandy. This is a tough spot to have your first road game here. And I don't know who's playing quarterback for a and I don't know. You know Probably how much Marcel matters. Reed, I would think. Well, I don't know if that affects your handicap or not, but I would expect Marcel Reed to be the guy. That's kind of who I would prefer. I, I lean towards AM. I'm I'm torn between do I like AM more or do I like Sammy's under? To me, this is probably more of a you know a 23 20 game. So I, I do like the under, but uh, I've heard a lot of people, a lot of people I trust and respect too say, hey, this Missouri's like the wrong team is favored here. Missouri should be favored. I'm not sure if I, I would go that far, but uh Jeff, I think Sammy's look here to the under is probably a good one. Yeah, here, here's the problem with Missouri in this game, guys, is they don't generate explosive plays on offense. And when you go on the road for the first time, which they haven't done all season, as we talked about. I don't bet on teams very often that can't generate explosive plays. It's hard to go down the field on the road against a good defense like AM and take 10, 12, 13 play score touchdowns. You have to be able to go down the field and chunk plays, in my opinion. We saw this happen, you know, to extend all over college football last week and the weekend before that. Like you have to be able to get those chunk plays. You 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 can't just pick up all team to death, especially when you're playing a team like AM. So I would lean to AM here. The under, I think, is a good call, guys. But I just don't trust Missouri in this spot because their offense has not shown they can generate those plays like they need to on the road. It's it's kind of a, a looking around. I, I said off the top that it didn't look like a great week with all these, the uh, only the one ranked versus ranked game. But but if you look, you got it's kind of a meaty week in the SEC with all these ranked teams, uh, kind of a double digit big favorites on the road against unranked teams. You got Tennessee laying thirteen and a half against Arkansas. You got you got Ole Miss off the loss laying nine and a half at South Carolina. Like it's a that's a that's a difficult spot, I think, potentially for for both teams. And I actually took Arkansas plus 13 and a half in that game. You, you look at the balls, you had the idle week last week, the big emotional win at Oklahoma a couple of weeks back. 
it was still the lowest outpoint Tennessee had offensively, the best team they played by far, and clearly the best defense in uh, in Oklahoma that they faced. And here you go into an Arkansas team that I wasn't necessarily high on at the same at the start of the year, but at the same time, they should have beaten Oklahoma State in Stillwater. I don't know how they lost that game. And the game against AM last week was it was a one possession toss up type game. So Arkansas could be undefeated. This feels like a very, very uh, tricky spot here for Tennessee, Sammy. Yeah, and they're four and zero ATS. So you're no longer, you know, getting them cheap, if you will. How about Tennessee four and zero, Army four and zero, Marshall four and zero, UNLV four and zero, BYU five and zero ATS. So when you think about those teams, obviously the books are aware that hey, they've been covering all season long. You're not going to get a bargain, right? You're not going to go to the store and see the Tennessee price. Oh, you get three dollars off if you buy Tennessee today. No, if anything, you're paying more because everybody is betting them. And will they keep covering? I mean, Tennessee has played four games and covered all of them. And how about that? How about the cover margin? They are covering by an average of 21 points per game. The Vols this year. That's crazy to me. Yeah, I'm a little bit afraid to step in front of this Tennessee train, especially, you know, you have a coach who is not afraid to run up the score. I, like you said, I don't think there's any value laying this number. And when you're hanging around the, the key number 13 and a half, maybe you just hold out and, and hope to get a 14. Um, I, I will say the Arkansas earlier games where they've been impressive, haven't, I guess, haven't aged well. When you look at Oak State, they haven't played well. Auburn, I don't know what kind of team that is. Um, I would I would say big picture. I'm starting to think Tennessee, like if they were in the national title game, I wouldn't be shocked because maybe these teams at the top, the Georgias, the Ohio States, uh, even the Oregons, I, I don't know. Like college football is usually just a uh, you know a chalk sport, a top heavy sport. I'm not sure that's the case this year. I would still say, and we're going to get to it. I'm st- I would still say Georgia, the best team in the country, but I don't know that there's a big gap between the Georgias and the Tennessees of the world as we would have thought maybe a month or so coming into the season. Here's my problem with this game if you're on the Arkansas side. I think it has to be one way you win this game. You can knock into a passing game. Arkansas's offensive line, guys, allows a ton of pressure, a ton of sacks. Tennessee's number one in the country in pressure rate. If this gets into any sort of passing game, Tennessee's covering this game by a wide margin. So if Arkansas can sort of control the line scrimmage early in this game, make it more of a running game, and hold Tennessee from scoring, right? If Tennessee gets up 14-0 early on, 21-7, even 14-7, like two, like two quick touchdowns, Arkansas's offense is going to have to feel like it has to keep up and try to pass the ball. They, they can't pass the ball in this game. It's So if you are on Arkansas, you have to hope that the game script sort of goes a certain way. I don't see this being a backdoor cover game. I don't see this being a game where Arkansas is going to throw the ball to, get, to come back in the game. Um, so that, I think it's a narrow sort of margin for them to cover this game. If not, Tennessee will blow them out. More, more likely to lose as a... Uh is a big favorite here, Ole Miss or Tennessee? Uh, Oof. Ol, Old Miss? I'd say Ole Miss. If Sellers is S- Sellers back this week, right? He presumably back this week, I Supposedly, think. Supposedly, yes. Yeah. I mean, look, they played well against LSU. Obviously, not they're not Old Miss, but uh, you're at home. You get Sellers back. They have, a, I think, a better chance to, to upset Ole Miss than, uh, than Arkansas does against Tennessee. You go back to the, the, the Big Ten. We started off with the – the, a couple of the SEC games, but in the, the Big Ten next week really is the, the week that we're kind of looking forward to right now with the Big Ten game of the year. I know people are probably going to be all upset that I said that because you have Ohio State, Michigan at the end of the year, but I think by that point, Michigan's probably going to have at least three losses, four losses maybe, so uh, you're looking at them maybe just playing spoiler in, in some sense, but Oregon, Ohio State next week uh, at, at Autzen, kind of a, how do you handle, I mean, we've seen some big move here you know, down in in this number um in Columbus this week the Ohio State Iowa game uh, what what it opened at like what 20 20 and a half and now we're down to 19 in some spots 19 and a half it feels like the auto play here for a lot of people just going to be uh, taking Iowa plus the points assuming that Ohio State's just kind of looking ahead but I don't know I know I know Iowa's been an over team this year but you go back the last three times they played a top 10 team they've been shut out so like I know supposedly they're improved offensively, but they're still primarily a run-based team. This Ohio State defense, I think, is really good. Uh, it is interesting, though, if you look at the Power Four teams, Ohio State's the only Power Four team that has played one Power Four opponent so far. So while we think 
The Buckeyes are really good. Uh, they still have not played uh, a really good level of competition thus far, but I would lean towards the under in this game and, and an Iowa team total under. I think uh, this is kind of a win the surest way uh, for Ohio State, and I think they do a good job against that Iowa offense. So I, I'm leaning under. Don't know if I want to lay the 20 up in one of those weekly pools where you got to pick someone. I probably would lay it uh, with Ohio State, but I don't know if anyone here has any thoughts on uh, Buckeyes and the Hawkeyes. I like Ohio State. I'm going to lay it, and you kind of stole my thunder with uh, with the team total under. I think it's 10 and a half at plus money. I mean, look, if you score two, touch- two touchdowns, if you score two touchdowns and you beat me, so what? You, you know what? So be it. You beat me. I just think um, I, I like the fact that Ohio State is coming off an effort where Michigan State moved the ball. Maybe they're going to be a little more buttoned up this week. Uh, I think you'll get them uh, on their best effort here. And once Ohio State takes a lead, how does Iowa? catch up, play, keep up. I know the offense has improved, but that defense is not the vintage Iowa defense. I remember the, the Cyhawk game where Iowa state was down big and they moved the ball through the air. They made passing plays. So to me, once uh, Ohio state gets a lead here, they could probably force some turnovers, maybe score on defense. I, I would lay it certainly before uh, I took it. I am going to lay the, uh, you know, the 19 and a half 20 or so with Ohio state. Yeah. If they fall behind Iowa, how do they catch up? That's really the only concern I have. When you look at it from a number standpoint, I've got Ohio state 130 and Iowa 114. So that's a 16 point edge on a neutral. And then you give Ohio state five or six for home field. So I'm technically North of 19. This could be though, this could be Usain Bolt racing a turtle and this turtle ain't going to win there. If it falls behind, you know what I'm saying? The, the speed and the skill and the talent, you know, I know Urban Meyer every uh, Saturday on the show says that Ohio State's the most talented team in the country. I don't know that I'm there yet, but in terms of sheer speed and, and ability to get up and down, I don't know that Iowa can hang for four quarters. And every time somebody says Iowa team total, I think about when we sat here last December yes. and we all talked about the <laughs> Iowa team total under two and a half against Michigan. <laughs> And they did not get there, guys. They did not get there in that game. <laughs> All right. I, I think Ohio State scores late in this game to cover it. That's how I, I think this game goes. So I'm with I'm with Will here and with Sammy, I think, on this one here. I will say, though, I, I have watched a little bit of Iowa's offensive line for the Joe Moore Award as we're sort of making our way through, through all this. Um, I think they can I, – I think – they can run the ball a little bit on Ohio State and make this game close early. I think all the points everyone has made is exactly how this game ends up because if Ohio State starts scoring a couple times, Iowa's not keeping up. But I, this is a much better test for Ohio State's defense. And anything they played, like not even remotely close to anything they played, is Iowa's offensive line and running back. Again, when you're one-dimensional, I don't think you can win a game over 60 minutes or even maybe cover a, a, a big spread like this against an Ohio State team. So I think it's I think it's close early, and then Ohio State's athletes and their ability to just grind on Iowa, who can't score the football, uh, and they end up covering this game late is, is sort of the way I look at uh, this one going. I don't think, by the way, that Ohio State's looking ahead to Oregon, just in, in my opinion. I think both those teams will be locked into the games they have now, knowing they've been looking forward to this game for six weeks now, right? I mean, this is all any of these two fan bases are cared about. It's only the coaching staff cares. Everything they're doing now, both for Oregon and Ohio State, is to prepare to play the following Saturday. So, so what, what, quick thoughts on, on Friday night's game? Anything, Jeff? Any when, feel? Yeah, for just hopefully no one gets hurt and we and we win by a point or more and move on to play Ohio State. I do not care how this game goes. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, 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 it's interesting, Sammy. You hit on the Ohio State speed before. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be in Columbus a couple of weeks back to watch that game against Marshall, which was a fantastic football game. Tongue in cheek, sarcasm dripping. But which on Judkins? Oh my He's god, fast. he is fast, like ridiculously fast. Speaking of ridiculously fast, how fast? Can I get from the studio next week, Jeff Schwartz, to the banks of the Raritan and the State University of New Jersey? Sunge potentially playing for a big noon kickoff appearance next week. If they can pull the upset in Lincoln, Nebraska, Huskers minus seven here. Feels like a – I don't – Rutgers is not a fraud. I don't want to say fraud alert or anything. You already said you it. You said it. I, I, I said it, but I, I don't mean it. Their helmet's on my shelf back there. I, I love Sunge. But how they won that game last week, out yard per play by like two and a half yards per play. Washington just kept shooting themselves in the foot. 
Uh, I think it's their power four teams that they played this year. They're allowed seven yards a play. At some point here, is the other shoe going to drop? As someone who's wagered on Rutgers in the first four games of the season, guys, this is the game they kind of get reset, in my opinion. Uh, I'm on Nebraska in this one. I think if you look at at what 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 you said, Bear, about Friday night's game, I got lucky to to cover that game. Rutgers was thoroughly outplayed by Washington. Uh, Nebraska is with their defensive front. Rutgers can't throw the ball. It's it's hard to bet on them in a road game like this against a defense like like Nebraska. I do think though, guys, they can slow down Rayola and Nebraska's offense that is sometimes sloppy and can't kind of put the ball in the end zone at times. But I think this is a reset game for Rutgers. We're, we're high in Rutgers. We like Rutgers, but they have not played as well as the scoreboard indicates the last two weeks. I think they go on the road here, guys, will and, and take an L here. I think Nebraska covers this game. It might be ugly early, but I don't trust the, the Rutgers offense and what we've seen for their defense against the better teams to, to cover this game. Yeah, and speaking of data points that have aged well or aged poorly, I mean, Nebraska beating up on Colorado, I think we all kind of have to look at Colorado a little bit differently a few weeks later. So that's a, a feather in the cap here of Nebraska. It's expensive. You got two kind of conservative coaches, two two coaches who, you know, they'll, they'll punt around midfield. They'll try to keep the game close. So I, I'm not dying to lay the seven, maybe an under Sammy. But uh, I think this line, I mean, it's a boring answer. I think this line is about where it should be. Yeah, speak for yourself, Schwartz, when you say we all love Rutgers. I haven't bet Rutgers one game this year because I don't want to watch it. And if I do <laughs> bet it, I won't watch it. But I tend to agree with Jeff in all seriousness. And I'm thinking about Lance of 7 minus 105 right now on the corn. Yeah, Rutgers lost 15 straight conference games as an underdog, covered just three. So typically these are games that the State University of New Jersey does lose. Uh, I mentioned my potential big noon spot next week. This week, following our podcast tomorrow, Jeff, I will be headed to uh, Happy Valley State College for uh, Penn State and UCLA. And that will be, of course, the the subject of our Super 6, sponsored by DraftKings. Uh, We'll have the column out later in the week. And the obvious question is, what will the outcome of the big noon Penn State-UCLA game be? Will Penn State win by at least 28 points? And uh, I would think, I don't want to speak for everybody here, but I will speak for myself, uh, that the answer indeed is yes. I was talking with someone this week, and uh, even within the walls uh, at UCLA, like there is zero confidence about them winning maybe even two games the, the rest of the year. Like they, they know they are not good. They are beat up. I think Garbers is going to play on Saturday, but really does that matter? This feels like a name your score type of game for Penn State. I I, I hope Penn State typically names their score. I I hope yeah. it is. I mean, I I UCLA is a terrible team that keeps covering these big numbers, right? They covered LSU. They covered last week in a game bear that you talked about off the top. Like it was thirty four thirteen. It felt like forty nine seven. I mean, it, that game wasn't remotely close, but they still managed to cover this game. UCLA have it right here, guys. They are. Um, where's that 128th in points per drive on defense? Um, they scored four offensive touchdowns the entire season. Now they're going, they played the last game Saturday night in the country. They're going on the road 2,500 miles away to play the first game Saturday, uh, the next week. And their quarterback might not play, their best safety might not play. The only problem, guys, and Sam, I'm curious if you think about is is look ahead spot for Penn State, right? Penn State goes to USC the following weekend. This could be a spot where, you know, after you beat Illinois, you, you maybe look ahead to USC and you're down to play UCLA. I was very impressed with Penn State's defense against Illinois. Yes. I mean, holy cow. They only gave up seven points. I still don't know how they didn't cover um, the pick six that got called back for whatever they called it back for. I was at the bar drinking. I almost threw the glass at the TV <laughs> when Penn State looked like they were about to get outside the number, and then they end up winning 21-7. to seven. Game never had a chance to go over, and I don't know, I don't know how UCLA is going to move the ball. That's my concern. I lean to the under, but when you see a line like this, guys jump two points on a Monday and a Tuesday, two and a half by Wednesday, that's pretty telling. I mean, my big fear with going under 46 and a half, 47 is that Penn State wins, you know, 45 to six, and I lose by a couple of points. So it's a stay away from me. I I know it's going to be fun for a lot of people to lay the 28, but it's just a pass. I lean under. But I'm I am nervous that Penn State literally wins this game by a million points 
and and goes over the total by themselves. Sammy, Will had mentioned something before with Colorado and Nebraska with the Nebraska game about how maybe we reassess that. And and, and you obviously have your numbers and your power ratings. And, and we were kind of kicking this a little bit um before on text. Uh, like Colorado, like they have to be one of the bigger movers, you would think, after the win at UCF in terms of uh, maybe not necessarily power rankings, but odds to win the Big 12, uh, Travis Hunter, Heisman odds. Like, like ha- where does Colorado like fit now in terms of rankings? Like how much should we reassess what we thought about Colorado after they got blown out at, at Nebraska to where they are now? It's a very tough conversation to have. And I don't mean it's tough like we can't have it, but it's it's tough to realign a team like that that had a win total of four and a half. And then we got our guy, Bruce Feldman on the set on Saturday saying, if they win eight games, I will vote for Travis Hunter to win the Heisman. It's hard to recalibrate a team that we thought could win four or five games. And now we're saying maybe it's eight or nine, but just some preseason numbers for you guys. And again, these are not my numbers. These were, these were look ahead numbers before the season. We're talking about Colorado getting nine at home against Kansas state on October 12th. That ain't happening. That's going to be closer to three when we get closer to that kickoff. Uh, going to Texas Tech, getting six, that feels high. Going to Kansas, getting eight, that's not going to be the real line in that game. And then November 29th, last game of the year, the look-ahead number there is Colorado getting six at home against Oklahoma State. Guys, all those numbers are wrong because Colorado has continued to elevate its play. Um, I wrote a story for Fox talking to Kenny White before the season about how when Dion took over to when Dion launched into week number two, week one, their power rating had risen almost 35 points. That's unheard of in college football from when he took over in December of what, 2022 to September, 2024, his team was 35 points better to the power rating. That never happens at a school like Colorado. So they've always been sort of a moving target. But when we look at their, you know, adjusted win total and their adjusted ratings, guys, why can't they win eight games? They have the two best players every game. They got Sanders at quarterback and Hunter, who, oh, by the way, is now the second favorite to win the Heisman because he got absolutely blasted in Vegas on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. He's 350 at a couple wow. of books. Wow. DraftKings still has five to one, by the way, best number in the country. But I mean, this thing is is only picking up more steam and if you want to keep doubting Colorado, I don't know that you're going to be right like you were last year. And that's that's saying a lot because I didn't think this was going to happen this year. 13 to 1 doesn't look like the worst number in the world to win the Big 12 when you've seen Oklahoma State, who is everyone's darling before the season. They haven't played well. Utah with a bad loss last week at Arizona. I mean, why well, can't this team be in a Big 12 title game? The, to me, the, the run defense is the big thing because we all know they could score points with uh, with Hunter, with Sanders, but they really held up at the point of attack last week. And... uh Look, I, I just think thirteen to one is uh, is a bettable number. I look, I, I know we're not that far removed from Baylor just playing reasonable defense, and that game is over. And maybe we look at them differently, but uh, I think you have to be more aggressive reassessing these data points because it's not like five, 10, 15 years ago, the, the transfer portal on NIL, there's just so many moving parts with these rosters where, um, you know, the, the preseason rankings, you don't throw them out the window, but your priors are just not um, as we're not as accurate preseason as we are in the middle of the season here. That was the best game yeah. they had played under Dion on Saturday. Like they thoroughly whooped By far. UCF. Yes. They, like, and, and I think UCF has to be downgraded a bunch of pass defense is atrocious and they can't hit the quarterback. And that's what it is, right guys? If you're playing Colorado, there's a blueprint to winning. But if you don't have that blueprint, they're going to score 40 points on you every single game. If you protect Shadur Sanders, he will find guys open. They, they've, this has always been the case, right? And UCF couldn't do it. Now, can Kansas State hit the quarterback more? Sure. Can they run the ball better than UCF? I, I think so. But to everyone's point, their schedule, Arizona. I, I don't know. Arizona's okay, right? They're maybe better than okay. The Utah win was great, but Cam Rising didn't play. Cincinnati, Texas Tech. Utah, it's Cam Rising can play. Can't, like, I, I took 13-1, to 1, Will, for, for them to win the Big 12. I, I just think having that, which I never would have said even three weeks ago, having that in, in your back pocket there with, with this schedule, um, I, I think it's worth it. Because if you if you can't get to the quarterback, they will score. Even, even if you do, like like Baylor sacked him eight 
eight times, I think, I think eight times. Yeah, they played better defense at the end. We're not talking about this. But nonetheless, Colorado won the game. They won in overtime, right? They went and made the plays at the end. So um, I did not expect to wager them to, to win the Big 12. But with, with how wonky that conference is, I think it's worth it. But from one Heisman candidate in Travis Hunter to another one in Miami quarterback Cam Ward, uh, this game opened at 11 and a half. We're down to 10 and a half, seemingly. Cal, a big home dog. If you look at, I mean, there, there is a history here with Mario Cristobal going to face a Justin Wilcox team unranked uh, t- when he was the Oregon head coach, 2021, two touchdown favorite. They won by a touchdown, 2020. They were d- nine and a half point favorite, lost the game outright. 2019 in Oregon, he was a 21 point and a half point favorite, won 17 7. So there have been numerous examples there, I say numerous, but three of a, uh, a ranked Oregon team taking on an unranked Justin Wiltox Cal team and Oregon struggling uh, off of the emotional win last Friday night, West coast trip uh, pack 12 after dark and Cal Twitter is having a field day as we, we <laughs> love uh, this week with the, the nickname off of the Catholics versus convicts uh, Notre Dame, Miami series from the, uh, the, the late, the eighties. Uh, they they've dubbed this one something else. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to I don't want to get in trouble. It's not too bad, but I don't feel like I don't feel like hearing about it in the tweets afterwards. But go check out Cal Twitter. They'll they'll they'll, they'll fill you in on what it is, and it is hysterical. Sammy, I don't know if I want to lay ten and a half with Miami here. I'll say the catchphrase if you want. You know, I'll say whatever you want, Bear. But say it for me, then you say it for me. Well, it's Coke versus woke. That's what it is. That's the <laughs> wow. uh, slogan that they're using. I'm not using it. They're using it on Twitter. They so are I'm, using it. That's what it is. I saw another one that I definitely won't say because that I'm not going to get into. But th- let me just put it this way, because we obviously stick to our numbers a lot, those of us that make numbers and adjust numbers. But winning that game at Miami for Mario Cristobal had to be euphoric because in the last couple of years, this was the game that they always lost against Virginia Tech always found a way to lose the loss to Marshall, the loss to Georgia tech, the loss to, was it middle Tennessee? They lost to. So it's like, these are the games that, that, that group, that, that locker room has lost a lot together for them to come out on the other side. I'm being told it was euphoric in that locker room. And now that they got that out of the way, maybe they come out and just realize we are not invincible. And we better start taking these little teams seriously. And that's what Cal is. Cal's a little football team right now. They could go in there and destroy them. That's not exactly like a numerical edge. That's just a feel that Miami comes comes out after that game, escapes, almost loses outright, and now they just go to Cal, feeling themselves and knowing that Cal is not going to be able to do anything to match their talent and their skill. Miami on a neutral is is probably, you know, 14, 15, 16 points better. So is Cal really worth six points probably on not. its own home field? I I don't think so, Bear. And I wouldn't be surprised if this was 38 to 10 on Saturday. No lie. I loved Cal before Miami had their game on Friday nights, guys. Like this was a yeah. per, this is a perfect spot for Cal to to have a sleepy Miami come to town, big Friday night win against Virginia Tech. Look, Bear mentioned it. It doesn't have to be just Oregon, but night games at Cal get weird. I've watched it my entire life. I've seen it happen. Uh, I I've not played a night game there. I played day games there, but it, it's weird. It's it's a weird setting in Berkeley. First time game days ever going to Berkeley. You might actually get a full crowd that's a little bit loud. Students are back in school now uh, at, at 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 Cal Quarter System. Like it's going to be weird. But Sammy's point here is the right one, guys. Is that Miami escaped on Friday night, which I think was the right decision. I don't think that ball was caught. And now they get to regroup and go to a Cal team that just is not going to score points in this game. They're going to play good on defense for a while before Miami takes over because they have better players up front. They have Cam Ward. Now, I will say, Wilcox has seen Cam Ward play, right? He knows who Cam Ward is. Different offense in Miami. But, Will, I loved Cal in this spot before Friday night. I would have taken them in a heartbeat if Miami had won by 7 or 14 or 21 points against Vautech. It didn't happen that way. And now I think Miami might be the right side. 
Yeah, I get where you're coming from. Miami got the bad game out of the way. They certainly did show some warts against Virginia Tech. Uh, for me, it'd be Cal or nothing. Haven't bet it, but uh, I, you know, I bear some sharp people we know have, have certainly been on Cal this week. So I get the uh, the love for the dog here. And you know, you hinted. At, let me ask you, Bear. If that game is in Blacksburg last week against Virginia Tech, do they do they still overturn it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. They still okay. overturn it. Yeah. I went it. back and forth. I went from, boy, there's not enough to overturn it. I still believe, hey, if you have to huddle up for five minutes, that's not conclusive. I did see one angle. I think the next day where it's like, okay, the ball was moving the whole time. One of the guys out of bounds touched it. That's not a catch, but I, I don't know. I went back and forth a few times of like, and I had no dog in the fight. I didn't really care. Uh, I went back and forth between that's not conclusive and I got why it was conclusive. That was a, that was a fun few minutes on Twitter though, just sitting here debating, <laughs> texting each other back and forth. Like they have to, they have to call it a catch. They can't call it a catch. That was a, definitely a fun night. So, well, and Will me. even said, Will said day of the game on Friday afternoon. Will's like, watch Virginia Tech win. And we all started laughing. And then you watch the game and all of a sudden you're not laughing because they very easily could have won that game. But I think Miami, that that's not a bad win. Well, no wins are bad wins. No. And at the end of the season, you look at it and we're going to forget that they won that game on a reverse call. All that matters yeah. is you win. And they won, but I think that's a good win in terms of morale in that room that they finally won a game that they collectively all together have lost for years down there, Barry. And, well, and two that, things quick I was say two things quickly. We did not need the fake field goal. That was a little too cute. Yeah. I know it's playing the results. Correct. And the way they hammered, uh, the way they uh you manage the clock the last minute. Andre Ware was very critical. If you listen to these college games, Andre Ware is usually not one to uh, you know criticize these coaches for clock management. He was destroying Virginia Tech, and rightfully so. I mean, they're letting you know 15, 20 second chunks come off the the clock that last minute. So Virginia Tech really let that one get away. Yeah, and that game was on the verge of being twenty one seven and probably a blowout. Cam Ward made the terrible throw, a uh, pick, uh, and then yeah. two plays later it was fourteen fourteen in the game. The game was on it. And, and same, that's what I was saying on, on Big Noon on Saturday morning. Like, you go back over the last five years or so, it is like no team in the country has lost as many games as a 17 point favorite or more than Miami has. So, to get that win, and look, last year Washington had a bunch of close call miracle finishes uh, to stay yeah. undefeated. Thanks. For, uh, TCU thanks for the that. year before had a bunch of close call miracle finishes. Both those teams reached the conference, the, the college football championship game. And a lot, it's not always easy and, and to do it in, in those magical seasons, a lot of times you do have plays like that and games like that and situations and breaks go your way. So yeah, that, that, that does bode well. Uh, we, we'll see. I'm hopeful. I do. I, I do expect a good number of Miami fans to be there Ooh, making the trip. on Saturday as well. I know quite a few people who are making the, the trip from, uh, from South Florida to Berkeley. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, the uh, one of the other games, the ACC game on involving an ACC team on Friday night, uh, UNLV now ranked off of the blowout win over Fresno with the with with, with the Sluka story all week, and we saw obviously um, Hodge Wilkins Williams come in and play great. They absolutely blew out Fresno State. Will, do you want to get involved here? I mean, this game's a bet up now, six and a half. Syracuse still got a pretty good offense, and it feels like this is an overtype game at 58 and a half to me. Shock, this is six and a half. Doesn't mean Syracuse is going to cover, but uh, I was thinking more like, I don't know, a field goal. Like That's you said, Syracuse. Syracuse can throw the ball. That's an efficient offense. They've got good weapons. Um, and now you have a, a quarterback who played well last week, and we all overreacted to Sluka being out, or, or the market at least, you know, overreacted. Uh, at least you have some film on him now, and uh, that's that's a style of offense Syracuse has seen before. To me, this is a field goal game. This is too many points. Now, from a betting standpoint, do you want to take six and a half? We're sitting here doing this on a Wednesday. I mean, I always think at six and a half, maybe you get a seven because seven's such a key number. If you go from six and a half to six, it matters, but not as much as six and a half to seven. But I like Syracuse. I think they're live. I think I, I think they're right in this game, Sammy. Ooh, as somebody who took every four and three and a half off the board with Fresno State, I felt really good, guys, coming into Saturday holding four. And I felt really bad about five minutes into the game when Mikey Keene threw a pick and UNLV basically did whatever it wanted. That defense, guys, that's that's the thing I overlook. Their defense won every single battle, it felt like, in the trenches. And defense 
travels. Obviously, they're going to be at home in this game. I talked to some guys who did say, though, they would take seven with Qs. So I I obviously respect the move. Um, I've got the game at like five and a half. So I'm I'm close to the current market right there. I'm impressed with UNLV. I'm rooting for UNLV. It'd be wild to get them potentially in the playoff, guys. I don't know that they can win out, but I know some really sharp people that are just waiting with bated breath to bet the orange plus seven. That's what I can tell you at this point. Has a quarterback in recent memory like played themselves like Sluka did? I mean, he, th- this big fuss about not getting paid and what he should get paid. Now, look, if you agree to $100,000, you should get $100,000. I'm with him there. Obviously, the coach shouldn't give out that information to a player if he can't honor that, which very clearly the the collective wasn't going to honor that. But, you know, you, you sort of loudly quit, quit, w- w- walked away, whatever word you want to use, redshirted, left the team, and then your immediate backup comes in, guys, and plays incredible. They had 59 points. 59. Like the, so if you're now looking at, at him for next year, his number just went down, immediately went down from what it could have been just oh, we could go six days ago. Now I'm not saying he shouldn't have left or done what he had to do because he thought he was getting paid, but he, he got played. He played himself, right? Like they told him to, to get lost when he asked for more money. Maybe they could have worked it out. And look, my feeling all along was, guys, if they thought he was that good, they would have found the money. There were offers. There was an offer from 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 Circa, right, to give him money, to right. get him to stay. Now, he, now reportedly, that, that offer came a day late because he had already unenrolled from, from, from UNLV, or at least he left the football program. But, like, he he played himself. Like, he had opportunity to to, to use his leverage. He did, but it ended up backfiring. Because I like, I like the ice team reference there, Jeff. You played yourself. He, play, he, he played himself. Like, I, I'm, I look, I get what he did. Don't, it's a business decision. You have to do that sometimes. It's a, it's a mess of situation. Coaches should not be – coaches are not allowed, by the way, to offer NIL money to players. It, it may or may not happen in other places. That's not their role. They're not allowed to do that. He he promised money that wasn't allowed. I feel bad for the family for agreeing to that. But he, he had an agent. The agent's job is supposed to know – the the rules and the procedures behind NIL and they just took him for his word, which he didn't have the money to give out. So it's a bad situation all yeah. around, but nonetheless, you know, came out on top of this because they blew out Fresno. I hope they keep winning because I think, you know, them and Boise state, uh, there, there's a matchup here soon, right? Against Boise state. Oh no, no. Yeah. October 20, 26. Yes. October 26th. I, I would love if both teams were in the top 25 for that matchup. Well, Sluka, formerly of Holy Cross. Holy Cross has Colgate this week, Sammy. We we eye on that one, or are we we looking down to uh, 308 927 Lafayette, 308 928 Fordham? Well, how, how rough Fordham Rams doing? You guys are now stealing my thunder. You know the game before I even <laughs> give the game. Fordham is 0 and 5, and I was texting with the guys that that do the FCS with me, and we were trying to guess what's the number in the Fordham game. And it's almost impossible to figure it out because this was a team that was laying 25 and 30 early in the season, lost both games outright. Then they lose to Stony Brook is about a 10 point favorite. Then Dartmouth is laying 14 wins by 32. Then Monmouth is laying 17 wins by 42. What, what do you make the number guys? I, 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 you know, Fordham's at home. But Lafayette, I think it's going to be Lafayette minus 13. And I, I would need at least 21 to take Fordham. I, I don't, wow. we don't know what the number is because it doesn't come out until, you know, late Friday night or early Saturday morning. So in terms of what's the play, I think whatever the number is on Lafayette, whatever they're laying, we're going to just lay it and, and it's going to move as it has for four <laughs> straight games now. But I don't like, let me throw this around the room. What is Lafayette, you know, getting against, or what is Lafayette laying to Fordham? I, I don't know what that number is. I don't even know where to start. I I couldn't tell you either. All I do is wait for, yeah, I wait for the text message and I just go to DraftKings and wager on it. So I, I don't know, like that, that's my role in this, in this. I just, Sammy says, <laughs> what a, Sammy says, just, just it's, gets, it's, it's do, I'm in. Gets his old meaty paw, meaty paws up there with the paws. <laughs> it, 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 it starts tapping away. If you told me right. If, what a company, yeah, man, it, too. It, oh, I just go to DraftKings and bet it. I bet they love hearing that, don't it, they, it, Jeff? It, Speaking it, of company, it, man, it. I bet these FCS ones, usually Saturday morning, I'm watching Fox Big Noon Kickoff. Great show. I advise everyone to watch it. But I do have one note 
these musical acts, we need to get Bear more involved in these. I see some of these other guys rapping and dancing. Bear is nowhere to be found when these musicians oh, are up there true. doing their thing. We need more Bear involved in, in these. I, I think we, we, need the, we need the Bear college fight song medley in there as well. I could give give a whole lot of humming and mix, mix and like give you a little lion in, in there as well. Speaking, I know, Will, you're, you're always interested in this. Yes. Travel this weekend, regional jet, LaGuardia, Philadelphia, Philadelphia State College. And then regional jet back home, State College, Philly, Philly, Hartford, Oof. right back into, into Hartford, which is good. Yeah, it, it, it it's it's a great place once you get there, but it is one of the biggest pains in the in the tuchus Easter well, yeah. uh, to, well, to yeah. get there on the landscape. There's no easy way. Like, like a lot of times, what I used to wind up doing is I would just drive. Like if I if I, if I were not in New York to do the the show on Saturday in the pot, I, I would probably just just drive like I used to do. From kind of my wife would come and she has family in Pennsylvania, so she'd see them, and it, it was it was an easy trip. So sounds yeah. like you're going to need a nice meal. So what what meal would that be once you arrive? Well, well Allen Street Grill is where we're headed on Friday. Uh, it, it, it's a it's a famous spot right in the corner in, in, in State College off the main strip. So Thursday, I don't know if I'm going to get there because I think the dinner planned dinners at seven. I got I got my my man Scotty Riddell sent me the the email, and I just don't know if I'm going to get there in time because I don't land until six forty. So uh, it's going to be it, it could be a, I know where the Jersey Mike's is. So it's always a possibility go to Jersey Mike's and pick up your sub. And uh, I don't know where the Wendy's is in State College, or else I'd go there. But uh, I, I know where the Jersey Mike's is. I'll get the sub back to the room, and I can either watch some uh, some some but some game three postseason baseball. I can watch Thursday night football. A lot, a lot of options. So if I don't make make the the the, the team dinner. With the with the game crew there on Thursday, so it's always a good fallback to have a uh, back in the hotel and be able to fire in some bets. And I, some I appreciate the the Yiddish for the Jewish New Year. Thank you very much. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, Rosh Hashanah is upon us. Uh, I will say, I next next Saturday, October twelfth, is Yom Kippur and the best day of college football of all time. So uh, thank you for that one. Uh, that's going to be so. so, yeah. so Jeff, Jeff, what what, what is? I'm, I'm I'm like not kidding, but I'm kind of like just yeah. I'm, Genuinely curious, like what does this mean for you next week? <laughs> well, we can talk about next. so Friday night I'll I'll be in synagogue for for Kol Nidre, and then Saturday I'll be in synagogue in the morning till probably about one, and so I'll miss. I think LSU old miss the first game on on October twelfth, um, and then I just will try not to eat. Probably I mean I won't eat till five six seven somewhere around there. But Oregon, Ohio State's at seven there. I, I would just lay in bed or lay on the couch. I mean, I I no water, no food for about uh, twenty six hours ish. Um, I will not go back to Temple to break the fast because Oregon's playing. I, I will I will forego that um, to watch Oregon play at seven thirty. I'll probably have my first bite to eat or drink at seven. That's my goal to get to. Oh, well, once you get out of synagogue at one, you can you're allowed you can watch tv oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 that's not a problem but but i'm i mean i'm just gonna be miserable because i won't have anything to eat and then hopefully my wagers are going well can you imagine not eating or drinking and then losing wagers it's not going to be fun so when jeff when you're calling around the synagogues asking if they have tvs what is the response usually <laughs> that? I, I haven't i haven't done that yet unfortunately uh or fortunately there's not not, not much cell service in either so i can't even check scores, which is inappropriate to do anyways. Um, you know, a, a bathroom break and go check the scores. The reception doesn't even work in there. So, you know, I'll just be, I mean, it is what it is. It, that's life. You have to, you have to deal with life sometimes, but yeah, that's why I'm not going to Eugene. Otherwise I probably would try to find a way to, to make it to Eugene for that, uh, Ohio state. Oh game. no. I just had this really bad premonition, very hungry, thirsty, Jeff texting me because Fordham covered <laughs> against Lafayette. No, next weekend. Think about how cranky no, next, he's going to be. Next weekend, Sammy. Whoever Fordham plays. Oh, it's next yeah, weekend. Whoever Fordham plays oh. next weekend. Yeah, yeah, next weekend. Well, we'll bet against Fordham until we <laughs> until we don't. Um, I want to just squeeze one more thing in there. Please. I know I know that I'm going to bet under 42 in Indiana Northwestern. Uh, 20 mile an hour wins this Saturday. Ooh. That game bear is basically played in Lake Michigan. I don't know if you've seen the new yeah. field. Yes. I've been waiting nothing, for this. There's nothing to block the wind. <laughs> so, I, I mean, look, point. I think we all like Indiana, yeah. but, you know, the fact that Indiana has scored, you know, 70 this year and 50 this year, and this total is only 42. Think about Northwestern only scored five points last week. Northwestern only scored 13 against Miami of Ohio. And the wind is going to be taking every ball 
and blowing it into the lake. So I, I'm under 42 in Evanston, and that's the last thing I had to just jam much, into the show. How much has that moved, Sammy? Is, is that is have people really hammered that under yet or no? No, it hasn't really. But no, it opened 42. It's 41 and a half at Pinnacle. It's still 42 at DraftKings. I think though there's a chance that we could see this thing by kickoff if the wind is as bad as it might be in Chicago. I, well, I'm just betting under 42, Barrett. That's all I'll tell you. I'm going under 42. Okay. Well, go 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 Leopards. That's Lafayette, and and go and go well, go wind. In, uh, in, in in go win yeah that guy could be taken in a million different directions but anyway appreciate you guys <laughs> do it again next week all right bear i'm waiting for the text message from sammy to bet on for to bet against fordham i've done it every week just blindly i think one week he said not to even do it i did it anyways and then my favorite part about, about wagering against fordham is the score bug like the score update and the score but it never updates correctly? So the actual score of the game, we ne- I never really know. Like, I'll text you guys like, oh, Fordham's down fourteen nothing. Sam's like, no, it's thirty five seven. So I just love that <laughs> we don't even know the exact score of the game until it's final. Yeah, no, it, it, it's been a uh, it's been a fun follow, and this is this will be good because I'm in, I'm in a good state yeah. this week. So uh, being in a good state means I'll actually be able to be able to partake in this once these the games release on uh on friday and saturday morning so, th- so that'll be good all right bear time for my fate of the week we're going back to a team that i faded in the season because they are very bad air force and navy are playing this weekend be a lot of those. i have navy minus 10 because they're good by the way they are 4-0 they are they are a 10th in the nation and net yards per play like they're playing some really good football right now they're 14 for 14 in the red zone scoring touchdowns like they, they are a they are a scoring machine they're playing well on defense but more than anything yeah, else, Horvath gives them a little bit of a, a passing yes. presence as well, which is which is big for that offense. More than anything else, Air Force is very very bad. Bear like like more than we think they were going to be this year. 129th in, in, in points per drive. They're 0 for 4 against the spread, but not even close. The first game was Merrimack. They didn't cover, but since then they were two and a half point favorite to San Jose State. They lost by 10. They were getting 17 points at Baylor. They lost by 28. And last week they were favored by four and a half against Wyoming who was not good bear and they lost outright 31 to 19. So uh, give me, give me Navy here minus 10. Uh, this game, I don't think it's going to be close. I know it's a rivalry game. I know they're playing for, for, for pride and for a trophy here and for the commander's cup, eventually right. Commander's trophy. It's trophy or cup I see trophy. trophy. Yeah. See, I see okay. Trophy. Yeah. Um, like, but it, they're, they're not good. They, they lost, we talked about to start the season. They lost a lot of production from last season. Uh, I think Navy who is, playing very well this season. Bear. Navy might be 11 and one. The only game on the schedule right now that like for sure, maybe an L is Notre Dame. Um, so I like Navy to cover this minus the 10 as my fate of the week. We're fading air force. Yeah. It's interesting because I bet air force once this year and once is enough for me. I had that disgustingly gross game against San Jose state. And that's all I needed to, uh, to see from <laughs> air force. But yeah, to back up your thought about these, uh, these CIC Academy games, 18 of the last 23 games between service academies, underdogs have covered. And that includes nine yeah. out of 12 with the spread's been at least a touchdown favorite. So the recent history in these service academy games, because of the familiarity between the two, yeah. is that dogs have a tendency to cover. But I'd have a hard time uh, taking Air Force plus the points here. And that being said, of course, we'll, we'll, we'll see Air Force wind up covering and screwing us both because it's your best bet and I will – have passed up on a potential winner, but uh, my best bet of the week presented by DraftKings. I look, this is nine and a half. Now you can still find a little bit better number in some other places. Uh, I laid nine and a half with Georgia tech against Duke. Uh, Duke was extremely fortunate last week. Uh, came back from a 20, nothing deficit against North Carolina in the second. Oh, by the way, North Carolina, like last two weeks, you lost 70 against JMU. You, you blow a 20-point lead. I don't know how much fight the Tar Heels have left in the tank uh, for this week when undefeated pick comes to town. But I think Georgia Tech here at home, I think this offense will put up a big number on uh, on the Blue Devils. And I, I will I will, I will lay this. I laid, a, I laid a lighter number early in the week. I would still lay uh, nine and a half here. I, I do think this is a double-digit win for a very – 
They're very soft five and oh Duke Blue double teams. Is is this number is this the like the highest you go in this number? Nine and a half? Is there some, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. I, yeah, one, double digits. I wouldn't I wouldn't lay ten. Okay. But uh, as long as it's still single digits, yeah, Duke that. five and oh with a soft schedule. They might have ended Mac Brown's tenure though at Carolina, right? I mean that that that's probably they're looking for a new yeah. coach after the season, I would imagine, in Carolina. Yeah, I would imagine yeah. Mac will Mac will retire. All right. My best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook is Minnesota plus eight and a half hosting USC for a couple of reasons, Bear. Sometimes I just, it's situational wager, right? So Minnesota played Iowa and Michigan. They played two tough teams. They played two top five defenses. Now they play USC, who's not either of those teams. The, USC can score an offense, but in the trenches, Minnesota has the advantage where they have not had it the last two weeks. So I think just playing a team like USC will excite them because they have to play Michigan, Iowa. Also USC, Bear, Look ahead spot to the max, right? You just beat Wisconsin. That game, by the way, it was 21 10 Wisconsin. They stopped yep. USC on a three and out after halftime. They muffed a punt. Then USC scored three touchdowns in a row. Game was over. So, like, that game was much closer than the final score. If you don't muff that punt, it's a much closer game. Now, USC goes to Minnesota, where we know they don't, they don't win in that time zone very often before they host Penn State in a huge sort of like Big Ten elimination game for the championship. Uh, the fall. So I think it's a look ahead spot for USC. It's Minnesota not playing one of the best uh, defense in the country. The last part of this game that I think is really important, Bear, USC's offensive line is really bad. Like it, it is a disaster this year. Minnesota can rush the passer. They can stop the run pretty well. I don't know how USC is going to to score. The Minnesota's defensive backs have a good havoc rate, which means they they, they, they tip a lot of passes. They intercept balls. Look at you drop so, havoc rate. Uh, havoc rate on defensive back havoc rate. So I like Minnesota. I just like the spot for Minnesota uh, plus eight and a half. This is I would imagine this is the best number you'll get on this. I, I would imagine come Friday night, Saturday, bear that people come in on Minnesota uh, in this spot. You so, think so? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think I think they'll the, the I, I think they'll see they'll see USC. I think it's I think you if you wait, you might be able to get nine on this. It well was. I, it I was can, it was earlier nine. It's gone back down a little bit. Um I, I seen the numbers. I mean I one person I trust has this as a, as a five point margin. So I'm curious. I should ask Sammy what he had this game at. Um but uh, eight and a half is uh is my best bet with Minnesota here. Go Golden Gophers. I'm not going to say the other well, slogan. I don't. I don't like. I don't like the row the boat thing. I think that's weird. Sky Yuma. I, I just don't. I don't like the 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 all those the, the, like the the fluff like row 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 the row the boat Sky Yuma. I just I just not a fan you, of it. It's you, my you personal opinion. You, you know, Bear. When um, we all see the like the pregame huddles where you know Ray Lewis is in the middle of the huddle like firing everyone up like you know go team. Mm -hmm. I'm the guy like off to the side who is like not. I, I that doesn't do anything for me. No, did nothing for me. I, I don't need raw raw speeches. Yeah. I, I can I can get I can get behind you on the, on this Minnesota play. I mean, we saw this role for USC a couple of weeks back, uh, where they were favored on the road, and like I said, it's a twenty twenty one Lincoln Riley on the road is a favorite fourteen times, three and eleven against the number. So it, it's not. It's definitely a. A big number to carry. Yeah. Like uh, SC, are they going to be excited? No. About going to Minnesota, like like it just it just doesn't yeah. sound like like this would be like what the the Pac twelve equivalent of going to what like I don't want to say what it, it'd be going to like Colorado right w without Dion yeah right like yeah. it'd be it'd be yeah. it's not Wazoo's its own special hell. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, uh, you, you can't break like, that. That's the thing about the, 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 not, you know, not playing the Pac-12 anymore. Like you have these little cities that um, are a lot different than playing in, in, in Minneapolis, essentially. Um, you know, but uh, look, I, I think, I think we're on the right side here uh, for this one. So uh, I'm very happy with uh, taking uh, the, uh, the Trojans here. By the way, if you don't want to, uh, if you don't want to lay the nine and a half is the best bet. My other, my other bet that I, I considered was, I don't even have the updated number on now. Um, Auburn team total under against Georgia this week. I think we'll get a pissed off Georgia oh, yeah. team. And if you look at Auburn's last seven games against Georgia away from Jordan Hare, Auburn scored a total of four touchdowns, been outscored uh, 216 to 54. So that that is a... Um, how, how much were you... And it's not good. How much were you prepared to mock me for my original best bet of Penn State uh, over UCLA? <laughs> Oh, serious mocking, but at the same time, UCLA is dreadful. They are really bad. And I actually, I have a lot of self self regret right now 
for we we obviously grabbed the uh the under five and a half and yes. everything before the year. And then when it got down to four, I got cute and like played some back to me. Hey, maybe they win five and it, I get I get a middle. They ain't winning five. So I gave I gave I gave some money away, which we we we've done a little bit too much the last couple of weeks. But hopefully this week will be better. So that'll that'll that's another addition in the books. Uh fun chat again with Sammy and Will in the gambling group chat. Fun chat with my man Jeff is always looking forward to seeing you in person on Thursday, which is tomorrow. Um, we got our helmets. We got we, we got our helmets now. I'm very excited about that. Should have been the should have been the national championship game in, in 2001. Miami should have played Oregon for the national title that year, not Nebraska. So uh there there's that. So again, thanks everybody for watching. Appreciate you uh following us and on our YouTube channel. We get to look at our lovely faces for about an hour or so. Downloading and rating, reviewing, subscribing on Spotify, Apple, uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Appreciate every single one of you for the interaction on social media, for Twitter and Instagram, all that other good stuff. And as I always say, take one thing away from this pod. Remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>